it's kind of crazy like when you think about like i've been watching a bunch of stuff about like the kind of early days of the drill scene in chicago and stuff yeah. and there was like this time period where all the drill rappers in chicago didn't realize that they can't they, that they couldn't just post everything on twitter and yeah. And that's the era where you have like a, a very young King Vaughn basically like alluding to all these murders or crimes that they are out are now acting like we're really him. Because like at that time, motherfuckers didn't really have that thing in their head of realizing like, oh, the cops are going to see all this shit. Exactly. Whereas in comparison now, you never see Dirk say anything really incriminating on social media. He might say some shit in a song that's incriminating, but he's he's not going to do it on Twitter. Yeah, but Va like, like I fucked with Vaughn like a lot. Right. But, you know, like. Police gonna see your shit. They know where you're from because you say it in every song and you've got it on your necklace. You feel me? Right. So, like, but I feel like Vaughn was a genius. That's something about Vaughn. He was a genius. You sure. know, pe people can throw whatever on his name, but Vaughn was a genius. He he was a goat for sure. 100%. He turned like the the gang war into more content than anybody ever before i think like he he kind of made it super easy for people to understand the bds and the gds and who their ops were and he like just the, the music was great but he also did a better job than probably anybody else in chicago history of getting people to really pay attention to all these different characters and to create like real drama for the people out of it yeah but when there's but when there's like 14 year old kids from fucking burbank the suburbs of Burbank saying S slide for Vaughn or exactly, fucking yeah. all, or all this stuff. That shit's lame. Bro. That's why I can't, but I can't be that mad at those kids who are doing that cringy ass shit and leaving those comments on No Jumpers Instagram because Vaughn's the one who laid it out for them. Like, he, exactly. You know? So, like, but, but like, one thing I like, I don't like is when people like jump into shit that's not their business. Mm. You know, like, like, go, like actually taking like, real life beef like people really die behind this and like they take it as like a joke like 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 with the bond all that other shit like right pe people like think that shit's like a game but like people don't realize like people really die behind that beef you feel yeah. me so all these fans trying to pick sides like trying to be like oh he's better he's better he's better this that like that shit lame to me yeah like, it's definitely lame but then it's also just like very understandable because yeah. th by these dudes making their content about that shit you kind of can't blame the kids for wanting to pick sides and treat yeah. it like a fucking sporting event yeah but, where yeah. they're rooting for one side you know yeah my thing is just like bro listen to fucking music yeah like stop like you know that's but you're smoking on some ops in your music who me yeah yeah because i got like like you know like but i'm not i'm not I'm not no imposter, you feel me? Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, I'm not going to go on here saying nothing stupid, but, you know, like, I'm not, you know, I'm not just talking no bullshit, you know? Like, I know what I've been through. I know what I, I know, like, what I stand on. I know the, what the people around me stand on. I know, like, I know myself, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So that's why I say, like, I don't got to prove shit to nobody. Right. You know, like, like I said, I stand on business, but I don't got to, like, pretend like I'm the hardest person in the world because I'm not you know what I'm saying no no one like there's always someone bigger there's always someone stronger there's always someone who got a bigger gun there's always you know so I just don't really you know I don't really feel the need to like show off to people just because people got uh assumptions of me just because I'm a white boy with glasses and a bowl cut you feel right me? so but be, okay being from where you're from is it kind of hard to stay out of the bullshit in terms of having beef with people or getting into conflicts like this type of stuff that you're kind of rapping about? Yeah, because Washington is it's a hateful ass state. That's the thing about it. That's why not a lot of rappers have came up out of Washington because it's a hateful ass state. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And and it's tragic, you know, like it's tragic as hell because like there's so there's so much talent, like so many people that don't even like they're not even gang banging. They're not they don't even got no ops. They don't even got no this, no that. They're just doing their thing. And you know, it's just it's just unfortunate how how people just genuinely like have genuine hate for someone else. Like right. when they're they're doing their own thing. You know, they're not in jail, they're not in the cemetery. So I just I salute it, you know what I'm saying? Unless they're not doing no weird shit, no fucking weird publicity stunts or no stuff like that, you know. You're doing your thing, it's natural, it's it's you know, it's authentic. You know, I I I support it, I salute it, you know. Was there anything like one particular event that sort of made you feel like you were in the streets officially or that you had actually ended up in this uh like 
like in real life or just like music shit? Either way, I mean, like it just seems like you have had a lot of real life situations, at least based on the fact that I hear you like dissing people and seeming to have been through a bunch of stuff. I mean, you know, like like I said earlier, you know, there's some things that are meant to be on the internet, some things that aren't. Right. You know what I'm saying. So you can like slip it in a song real quick when it's kind of like artistic. Yeah, but... because like like you know, all hypotheticals. If someone asked me like, "Hey, what does that mean?" I could just be like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Like if some fucking law enforcement like, "Oh, oh, what will you say you did?" I was like, "That's just entertainment officer." You right. know what I'm saying, but like other than that, like you know, it's just. I definitely don't want this interview to be included in the little Cito Rico case. Yeah. <laughs> It's my fucking crazy. <laughs> but uh okay, so what what was the music that you were listening to when you were real young that made you obsessed with rap? And at what age did this happen? Uh I was real young. I was real young and uh one of my neighbors had a uh it was like a easy E disc. It mm -hmm. was like like one of the real like CDs. Right. It was the uh the straight out of the straight out of Compton album and I think that was an NWA album. Or was there yeah, it, it was called Straight Outta Compton. Okay. It was the whole NWA thing. Right. But uh, that album, but Easy E was was a big one. Wayne was a big one. And uh, like, I I didn't mention this in my last interview, but like I fuck with Wiz Khalifa too. Uh. Khalifa's hard. All right, people, we just hit three hundred thousand subscribers. You know we're trying to hit four hundred thousand subscribers. So that little red button, tap it, tap in. Appreciate y'all.